there is something very special about making a longbow. It connects you with the past, your ancestry, the land, especially if you're using wood that was sourced from your local area. There is something about it that I really can't explain. Now I've made um, several long bows or self bows as they call them when you just make it out of a piece of wood I guess. Um, and th But this is the, my first takedown long bow. It's built in the flat bow shape and it's a bit of a character. It's a character bow. That's what we call them when they have all these knots and, and uh, interesting shapes here. I can take it apart uh, in the handle, uh, which makes it easier when you are traveling or if you just want to strap it onto your backpack when you're hiking and so on. It's still a bit oily from the linseed oil. <laughs> um, and um, I will uh, show you in this video how I built this uh, bow. So let's get to it. So, we will be making a flat bow, um, which means that it will have a handle that is not bending. So we can have some knots and stuff in the handle. That's this part, that's okay. Um, and in the limb that is bending, I can have a, you know, a snake shape, that's okay, because, because I will be following the grain. Um, and preferably you want a piece of wood that th this will be the front side of the bow, right? And you want a piece of wood that bends towards the front, um, not the other way around. You, you don't want a bow that is already bent in shape, if that makes any sense. So this is actually a very good part here. And there's a knot here, it's not too big. Um, it might produce a hole in the bow, which is very cool. Some of my bows, they have holes straight through. Um, so this, this here is, an, is, a very good, is a very good piece. So <clears throat> let's measure. I want at least 90 centimeters. Yeah, I think we're good actually. We want 90 centimeters and this will be a perfect, perfect shape. But I will be following the center, which is here. And um, it will have the handle here. And it will go out like this. It will be wide here. And then it will narrow down towards the tip. The challenge is the other part, this one. This knot, I'll try to avoid this knot here. This knot is not funny. <laughs> what I want to do here is actually to put this knot here as close to the handle as possible. Which means that I will push this out towards the tip. So the tip will be here. And the handle <clears throat> will be in this part here. So if you imagine the handle goes like this, um, this knot here will still be in a bending part, but it's not as bad as it could have been. What we need is to have uh, the tips and the handle uh, to be on a straight line. What happens between those three uh, points doesn't really matter. So here, here, and here. Those need to be on a straight line. And I'm making it slowly narrower as I get towards the tip here and I'll leave quite a bit 
extra here in case it doesn't align when I start finishing the bow. So and I'll do the same here on the, on the other side. Okay, so day two. Um, well, it's been a few days actually since I um, since I was here uh, working on this, but uh, basically <clears throat> what I will do now is to take my draw knife and I will um, try to follow the blue line here. And I will take off the part that's outside and I will start shaping the handle down here. How beautiful it is already. So the handle will come here, up here, and you can see how the shape of the bow is going to look. So I think this bow will be quite beautiful. Okay, so this is the second one. Now, uh, if you haven't haven't worked with a draw knife before, I can tell you that it's it's a it's my favorite my favorite woodworking tool. Um, you can do you can do so much with it. You know, it's 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 awesome. It takes a bit of getting used to, but uh, yeah, one thing you know you can take out take off <laughs> small parts like this one. Um, now I want to I want to tear off parts of the wood. If you don't want to do that, you go across like this. You know, and take off parts like this. But I want to remove with the grain quite a lot of the material here. I'm really digging into the into the wood. Okay, so this goes here like that. And now I have to fit the other parts. Okay. So here's the handle. It looks to me like it's aligned in the handle and bow tips. And I've used this uh, big ruler here to check that it is actually aligned. Okay, so this is extra strong, two component, slow, slow drying epoxy. We can have no glue that uh, connects to the other part because then it won't be a takedown bow anymore. So we'll uh, put the epoxy on here like this. I'm going to have to measure. little bit more so we will then attach it just checking if there's any glue inside there uh, it's not here it goes Okay, now I have a little bit, um, what do you call it, leeway <clears throat> and I'm going to put uh, some cardboard underneath the handle so that I get a little bit of recurve in it. I think this should be perfect. 
Yep. So the rule, as always, you need the handle and the two tips to be on a straight line. Yeah, I think we got it. Okay, so I'll just leave it to dry. And, um, and we will continue shaping the limbs. So, here they are. I glued uh, those bits there on. And um, they um, they still fit. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, day three, and what I'm going to do now is to reduce the thickness of uh, the bow limbs so that they start bending. And uh, uh, th that's when we start seeing how the bow is going to look. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So this is the one that I have um, started to shape. It is much thinner. And now I will do the same with the other limb. Okay, so let's take a look here and um, I'll try to explain how I'm uh, working. Now, these are knots. That's, that's where it used to have a branch coming out of the tree. And here's a big knot. And here's another one. So a big knot like this one coming out here. Um, you can see how the tree has strengthened and made the, um, the wood thicker. So it's important not, not to straighten out this part here. You will have to follow the, the grain. That's how we get, you know, what we call a character bow. Uh, a character bow is not straight. Uh, as long as you align the tips and the handle, uh, it can curve and go, uh, you know, have a snake shape uh, almost. And uh, that's, you, you don't do that for fun. Well, it is fun, but you know, uh, you do that because you don't want the bow to break. If I went straight across here, I would create a weak point, but I will follow the grain around this knot and around the other knots. Sometimes uh, the knot um, <laughs> comes loose and you get a hole through the bow, which is uh, very cool, if you ask me. Okay, so I have attached the two parts, the two limbs, like this, and reduced the thickness. Um, I can now bend it slightly with my knee and now what I need to do is to uh, reduce it even further uh, I'll keep the uh, tips wide so that I have a little bit uh, so that it's a bit, bit forgiving you know I need the string to to uh, go through middle of the handle uh, otherwise uh, the bow will it will twist in the handle and it won't be a good bow. So uh, yeah, we are getting there. I really like um, building a takedown longbow or flat bow, and uh, it's not more difficult. If anything, it's easier because you can adjust uh, the limbs a little bit uh, before you. Uh, you glue on the, the handle. Okay, so this is a tiller. A tiller is a device 
that you use to um, to tiller your bow. And the bow is resting on top there. And I have um, a long string. This is not this is not going to be the bow string. This is just a tillering string. I want the bow to uh, bend evenly. So that's what I'm using the tiller for. And we can see here that this part here actually bends quite evenly already. This part here has a sort of a problem area uh, right here because of this knot. So um, uh, the bow will not be bending where there is a knot. I'm looking for weak spots and spots where the bow is not bending. You don't want to create any hinges. So it's not bending at all here. But it is bending here. It's not bending there, but it is it is bending at you know the similar side on the other side there. So I need it to bend a little bit here and also uh, in this area. So uh, I used my pencil to mark out this area and I'll, uh, I'll remove some of the material in this area here. You know what, I can take quite a lot off here, actually. We don't need all this material here. This is too thick. Uh, I, I have to warn you. <sighs> Suddenly, you hear uh, a sound that you don't want to hear and the bow breaks. It happens. So. If it happens, I will include it in the video and I will cry a little bit as well. Now, this is why it's important to keep the tips wide, or at least, you know, that's how I do it. Because when I put the string all over to the side here, um, and you can kind of see now that this is where I want the tip to be, right over at the side here. Because I really have to keep the tip there in order for the string to be on the handle. And also, same down there. If I put it in the center, the string moves over, over here. Now on the other side, it will be um, interesting because the tip will be over here, but we have this knot here. So <clears throat> do we include it? Which I really want to do because it will make this <laughs> shape here. Um, uh, but, but, or do we remove it? If I remove it, uh, the danger is that it becomes too thin, of course. So I'll start by taking out this part and leave the knot there. I won't be making a bowstring in this video. It's uh, <coughs> I'm borrowing the bowstring from this bow, uh, which is also, I believe, a um, I think it's an elm bow as well.
Okay, so what do you think? Now it's never going to um, this bow since it has these knots. It's never going to bend completely straight because um, this has this actually goes this way like that. So with this knot here, <clears throat> and here's the big knot. And there's another one here, of course, like that. So, it's not so easy, you know. <laughs> okay, so I am actually quite happy with the bow as it is now. Uh, I will shoot 200, 300 arrows and then re-tiller, uh, <laughs> if that's a word. Uh, take it back, put it back on the tiller to see if anything has changed. But uh, for now, I will keep it like uh, like this. I will sand it and I will um, uh, put some linseed oil on it. Uh, but I will also um, make a. Um, hold on. See that? <clears throat> the tip here. Hold on. I will make an extra, uh, I think in English you call this knock, <laughs> uh, like <clears throat> for the stringer. The stringer is a string that you use to get the bowstring on, because believe it or not, this bow is quite heavy. And I thought it wouldn't be, but um, I'll, um, I'll um, Measure the poundage and in a few seconds, but let's get let's make a uh, an additional knock here for the string. So you put one loop, the stringer, on the on on the on this one here, okay, and the bowstring inside of it and you pull the stringer and you slide the bowstring into the nox here. Okay, I will um, I'll try to remember not to pull it all the way back because that's part of uh, shooting the bow, shooting in the bow. Um, I don't know how to say that in English. But anyway, um, you, you draw it more and more and more. Uh, but uh, right now, let's see we can find the poundage somewhat um, and I hope it won't break <laughs> so that's I don't know halfway and it's 30 something pounds I'm very pleased with that because it means that when I have finished shooting in the bow, <laughs> it will be maybe almost 50. And that's very good for a uh, bow with as many uh, <laughs> flaws, can I call it that? Um, these uh, bumps and everything. For a character bow, that's very good. So now I will sand it and I will put some linseed oil on it. I have a piece of leather hair from an old shoe actually, from an uh, old boot. And I will just glue it on, on to, to hide this uh, rather ugly thing here. <laughs> okay, the magic moment. Ah, some tool marks. <laughs> Oh, all my bows, they do have some tool marks. Yep, that's just how it is. Now I haven't decided which limb will be up yet, actually. So um, when I decide, and I will decide after I, I get the feel of the bow, uh, and then I will probably shorten um, <laughs> the lower uh, limb because the upper limb needs to be about 
two centimeters, almost an inch um, longer, um, in my opinion. So let's see. Um, let's start shooting in the bow or shoot in the bow. I don't know how to say that in English actually. It's uh, important not to get too eager when, it, when you're shooting in the bow. You need to be patient. If you pull it all the way too soon, it might break. I like it. It shoots very straight, not much, um, what do you call that in English? Um, um, you, you don't get any pain, in, in any shock <laughs> uh, in your, your hand. It's very smooth, but it's, it's also quite um, uh, strong or it's hard to pull it because it's, it's, not, it's not for the weaker man, this bow. <clears throat> Check out one of the other videos that should appear on the end screen and until I see you next time, have a wonderful day and as always, stay strong. Bye.